Hi, my name is Timo Elliott. I'm an innovation evangelist for SAP, and I'm here in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, with Charles Gadala. Uh, Charles, could you introduce your role? Yeah. Hi, Timo. Uh, my name is Charles Gadala. I'm a director in the Solution Management Organization. I focus on advanced analytics and specifically predictive analysis. And what are you doing here in uh, Kuala Lumpur? My first time in Asia, it's an amazing city. Uh, but uh, in Kuala Lumpur, it's part of a series we're doing. Uh, so we've been uh, touring uh, Southeast Asia, Philippines, Kuala Lumpur, and uh, tomorrow we'll be in Singapore. A part of a, an education tour, if you will, on uh, predictive analysis and big data. So what are kind of some of the key themes? What are the three takeaways that people should have after they've seen your presentation, okay. apart from the software is awesome? Yeah, exactly. I hope that's a key takeaway. Uh, the three that I would hope they get is uh, SAP is serious about predictive analysis. We're making a big investment behind this. It's a large and growing space, and we're making our big mo uh, move here. Uh, the second takeaway that I hope they get is that our software is ready. Uh, it's absolutely quality grade and can do the analysis required. And third, uh, the integration opportunities within the SAP system, the ecosystem, the apps, and the partner's ability uh, are what's really going to drive our sales forward. So what's an example of the kinds of applications that has SAP has in mind using the predictive technology? Yeah, great question. Uh, fraud management, one of the top ones that come to mind. So for instance, we're doing uh, 25 HANA-based applications. Uh, the nearest to completion will be the fraud management ones, uh, claims management, lifecycle management, SAP CRM, uh, partner management as well. So uh, basically anywhere you, where you can enhance the decision with some kind of forecasting ability, uh, that's what we're trying to integrate with. And this. Sorry, this year uh, there will be 25 that we're rolling out, and then next year, furthermore. But surely, though, fraud management, we've been doing fraud management for new. What, what is new? What can we do different now that we couldn't do before? Great question again. So basically, in fraud management, the concept of uh, looking backwards at the data has been always a traditional way of doing it, where I look at historical data, uh, try and build some kind of model on that, and then and model that to go forward. Uh, but I'm typically catching things as they've already happened. And what we're looking to do is catch things as they're happening or as they will happen. So that's the element of the predictive piece, where we can actually take a look at the data, find out uh, you know, trends or relationships or correlations that wouldn't have necessarily been obvious previously, apply that to new data so we can catch things in the act. Uh, you give a great example of uh, you being hassled for your credit card every time you visit a new com uh, country. Uh, but wouldn't the, if the one time that you actually had your credit card stolen and they call you up, we want to make sure that that person gets caught at the till as opposed to being able to run away with your credit card. So that's, and then that relies on the, the in-memory speed of a platform like HANA. What's the number one uh, question that you get from audiences once you've done a presentation like this? Yeah, there's a, a few, but the biggest one that we usually get is uh, why HANA? Like, what's the benefits of doing this with HANA? Uh, and uh, pretty much we've articulated that with the speed. You know, HANA plus a predictive analysis makes such a huge difference, right? The speed with the analysis. And we never had that opportunity before. Previously, we've had to rely on uh, traditional disk-based uh, operating systems and, and databases, which means it really slows down. And so it's to do a complicated analysis like a K-means analysis or a Monte Carlo simulation requires multiple passes of the data was really not very feasible on hundreds of millions of rows. Now it is. And that's been the quantum leap for it. Now, there are some existing leaders in the predictive an analysis space that have been around for a long, long time. Um, what are some of the reasons that somebody who likes those products, they're good products, but why should people give uh, HANA and Business Object SAP uh, a second look? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, uh, and we can't denigrate any of these leaders. They're fantastic in their, in their spaces. Uh, so, But the thing is, we're not that bad, <laughs> I think is the question. So I mean, uh, what we have is the ability to be speedy. I mean, we have uh, benchmarked against them and we've come out on top. Uh, we have the ability to be at a better value level. So uh, when was the last time you heard SAP was the cheaper uh, option? Uh, we are the cheaper option. And the third part, I guess, would say is uh, the level of the integration with the R language has allowed us to hu uh, usually open up the algorithm library uh, than that we've had before. So over 4,000 algorithms, much more than SAS and SPSS and Statistica all combined. Uh, so you know, we're frankly uh, hoping people push us on these questions because this is the answers we want to, want to provide. Great. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Timo. Thanks again.